Hi folks, um, I've decided to put a, a series of videos together talking about how I control the speed of fans like this. This is the fan from the video that I put out about, what, seven years ago? It's a 6,000 RPM fan and it does actually draw very close to 4 amps at full speed. Now, there is a lot of misunderstanding about PWM fans as opposed to PWM speed controllers. They are not the same thing. What I'll do is I'll show you the schematic first of all and I'll talk a little bit about how that applies to these fans. Right, so here is the most basic version of the circuit that I've used. This came from the NIDIC website um, and this is obviously their suggestion for a very simple 25 kilohertz square wave generator. Now, as you'll see later, it's not 25 kilohertz. It's a lot slower than that, and it's also not very stable. Um, and we'll see that shortly. There's so much misunderstanding about PWM control of fan speeds. And I think that's because there are other versions of electronic speed controllers which control the, the supply voltage. That's not what this is. Um, I've got a fan here, which I will very quickly demonstrate this with. So, bog standard 120mm delta um, box fan. And you see the four pin connector. I've removed pin three. I don't tend to use the tack output. But um, the first pin there on the left is your ground. The next one along is your supply voltage, which is 12 volts. That is untouched. You do not touch these, they stay the same. It's this fourth pin on the end here, which takes that five volt signal from the output of your circuit. So this here goes into the fourth pin of your fan. It's the same thing that I did with the really powerful San Ace fan. Most four pin server fans comply with this standard. And it doesn't have to be 25 kilohertz. I've had it working at 30 kilohertz. I've had it working at 10 kilohertz. I think you're just gonna have to play about with it and find out what works and what doesn't. Um, I've put some values on this if you want to have a go at building it. However, there is a simpler version of this circuit which I find to be better because the frequency is more stable and also one of the add-ons that was suggested for this circuit to boost it give it a bit more power to drive more fans and that's a schmidt trigger which is also done here with a 555 timer uh, and the only thing to note about this is that if you add a schmidt trigger to this circuit it will invert the output so if your signal generator outputs high, this will output low and vice versa. It's just something to bear in mind. And last but not least, um, it's a better version of the circuit purely because it's simpler. It, it uses one IC and that is the 556, which is two 555 timers in one package. All of the capacitor values are the same. And as before, you have two decoupling capacitors on your uh, input. They're in the wrong place on this circuit, but don't worry about that. Um, I find that if I use the 10 microfarad electrolytic, it's fine. It does a really good job of smoothing the noise um, on the circuit. Um, and you've got your timing capacitor here which is 680, I actually find using a value of 560 gets me closer to 25 kilohertz. So again, your mileage may vary. So I'll hook this one up to the oscilloscope and we can have a look at what happens when you turn the pot. Right, that's the oscilloscope set up. I'll turn this on 
and we can have a look at what happens. So, at the moment, uh, let me just bring up the duty cycle here. Um, duty cycle is 14.4% and the frequency is just under 12 kilohertz. Now if I turn this pot, I'm going to turn it down, you can see that the frequency has gone down now to about just over 10 kilohertz and the duty cycle is sitting at 4%. If I turn it up, you'll notice these peaks will get closer together. And that's because the frequency is going up. Frequency has gone up to about 20 kilohertz at the high end, I think. Um, and remember that this version of the circuit uses the Schmidt trigger. So that's it sitting almost at 100%. And if I turn it all the way up, it loses it, its duty cycle, obviously, because it becomes more or less a steady um, input voltage. And we'll go back down again. Now you see the frequency going down as I turn down the pot there. Right, so this is an example of one of the 556 based um, circuits that I put together. You can see here it has two channels, they're both the same. Uh, the headers on the left and right side are outputs to four wire fans and this header is for the supply voltage from the power supply. And what I figured a while ago was that if you take a floppy connector from an old power supply, they look like this, and it has a little notch on the back of it, if you cut off that notch, it fits perfectly onto one of these headers, like so. And it's actually a really nice fit. It's a nice tight fit. So it has the same um, 2.54 millimeter pitch. And these pins are capable of taking, I'm going to say, four amps. You'll get four amps out of that. Maybe don't run it for a long period of time. I've actually put more than that through it, but only for a very short periods of time. And again, a reminder that the circuit itself is not handling high current. The circuit here, it's all on five volts. And the output to the fans is a, a square wave with a maximum value of five volts. And what I'll do is I will very quickly demonstrate with one of my deltas that this controller is adequate. It's adequate. Um, I've got here a pretty beefy PFC 1212DE. So I think it's a 5500 RPM fan. What I do with these is I carefully set this, because I don't know what PWM signal it takes. Some fans take an inverted signal. So I'm going to set this to about 50% duty cycle. I'm going to turn the supply on. <coughs> And I'll turn it down with this controller. Turn it down. So that's the lowest speed from this fan that I will get. And you can tell, I mean, I'm not sure how clear this is coming through on the mic. This is making very, very little noise. It's almost inaudible. There is some motor buzzing and it's it's got quite a lot of vibration. I can feel it in my fingers. But this, because of the circuit, you could run this for years. You could set it to run at that speed and leave it. There's no heat needing dissipated. It's got extremely high efficiency because the supply voltage is still at 12 volts and it's not being modulated. And this obviously applies to any four wire fan. You could put um, a Noctua on this. And I could turn this up if I so wish. Make it go a bit faster.
don't want to go too fast. So there you go. That's a, a very simple introduction to this particular circuit and I'll make another video with some alternatives as well because there are a lot more things that you can do with it.